iOS 17 has been out for about a month now, so hopefully if you're watching this video, you've had an opportunity to install it on your device and get to know it. I've covered a number of the new features in iOS 17 in some previous videos, but what I haven't really talked about are these specific settings that I think you should be paying attention to. So that's what we're gonna talk about in this video, 16 settings that I think you should know about in iOS 17. Okay, let's get into it. Battery charging optimization has been on your iPhone for a while now, but if you've bought an iPhone 15 or 15 Pro, there is an additional option here for you. If you head into settings, then battery, then battery health and charging, and then tap on charging optimization, you can see that there is a new option here called 80% limit. According to Apple, when you choose this, your iPhone will charge up to about 80% and then stop charging. If the battery charge level gets down to 75%, charging will resume until your battery charge level reaches about 80% again. The theory here, I guess, is that Apple themselves are saying that charging up to 80% is better in terms of maintaining the chemical lifespan of your battery, albeit at the loss of 20% of its capacity. Like I said, it is only available to people who own an iPhone 15 or 15 Pro at this time, but judging from the comments that I've had on my previous battery videos, I can imagine there are a lot of people who would want to use this. AirDrop has been improved drastically in iOS 17, and anecdotally, I can tell you that it is much better here on the iPhone, on the iPad, and on the Mac than it ever has been before. One of the new features here on the iPhone is that if you bring your iPhone and tap it against someone else's, it will initiate an AirDrop connection. The problem is that this setting can be a little bit oversensitive, so you might want to switch this off. To do this, open settings, then head into general, then airdrop. The setting that you want is at the bottom of this page. It's called bringing devices together. Toggle this off to disable the feature. If you use Apple Music, head into settings, scroll down and choose music, and you'll see this new option in the settings here called crossfade. With this toggled on, Apple Music will fade one track out whilst fading the next track in. You can set the amount of time that it takes for this to happen, choosing anywhere from one second all the way up to 12 seconds. This one is very much a personal taste option. Some people, I think, are going to love this. Some people are not going to like it. So give it a try and see where you sit. In iOS 17, enabling your VPN is easier than ever, as there is now a dedicated toggle switch in the main page of settings. You just open up settings and switch on or off as you need to. And that does bring me quite nicely to Private Internet Access who are sponsoring today's video. Take streaming, for example. Watching Netflix without a VPN is a bit like paying for a business class ticket on your flight and then being told you have to sit in economy. Streaming services like Netflix have different library options based on where you're located, and some shows simply can't be accessed if you're not located in that region. Some popular websites block or restrict users from other regions from their content, and many sports events have regional blackouts and are only available in certain countries. Private internet access helps you overcome these restrictions by giving you the option to change your IP address to one of 91 countries and choose from all 50 US states, allowing you to gain access to websites and services that are only available in those locations. And it's not just about streaming, it's also about security. Free Wi-Fi, like the kind that you get in airports and coffee shops, is great because it's free, but it's also extremely open, leaving you vulnerable to having your personal information stolen or malicious software being installed on your device. Private internet access safeguards your internet connection through an encrypted tunnel, shielding your digital life from the eyes of those that are looking to exploit your private information. And there's a reason why I've recommended private internet access so many times here on the channel. They have a no-log policy that they've successfully defended in court, which means that they don't store any personal data about you, the person using their service. Also, private internet access is available for all platforms, Windows, Mac OS, Android, Linux, iOS, and many more, and you can use one private internet access subscription to protect an unlimited amount of devices all at the same time. Signing up for private internet access is risk-free. There's a 30-day money-back guarantee and 24-7 customer support. Sign up via the link in the description of this video to get 83% off plus four months for free, which works out at only a couple of dollars a month. And thanks again to private internet access for sponsoring this video. Another major change that came to iOS 17 was the ability to remove the hey from the voice assistant phrase that I'm sure you know, but I'll type on screen just in case. Understandably, a lot of people were concerned that this was gonna to lead to lots of false triggers, but I've actually found that your phone assistant is better than ever at recognizing when you're talking to it versus when you're talking about it. It's up to you whether you wanna use this feature or not, 
but if you'd like to change it, you would go to settings, then Siri and search and look for the listen for option. Here you can choose to either turn this off altogether or choose between the old phrase or the new phrase. Whether you think it's a good feature or not, contact posters were one of the headline features of iOS 17 this year. So something you should absolutely do is first of all, create your contact poster, but also enable it so that when people call you, they see the contact poster that you've just taken the time to create. To edit your contact poster, open the phone app, ensure that you're in the contact tab and tap on the my card section at the top of the screen. Tap into contact photo and poster and follow the steps to create your contact poster. But once you've created your contact poster, make sure that you go back to the contact poster menu by opening the phone app, tapping on contact at the bottom and then choosing my card, then choosing the contact photo and poster option and tap on share automatically. I would personally recommend that you enable contacts only here, but this means that anytime someone in your contacts list calls or texts you, they'll be able to see your contact poster and photo. Predictive text has seen some major changes and improvements in iOS 17. And if you're the kind of person who likes to use predictive text, it is better now than it's ever been before. But for many people, it will just be an annoyance. So there is a way of disabling this if you'd prefer to. Go to settings, then general, then keyboard, and you'll see that partway down the screen, there is a predictive option. Toggle this off to disable the feature. There is a setting in your iPhone's camera settings that makes it really easy for you to know whether or not you're capturing a level photo. If you open settings and then scroll down to the camera options, in here you can see that just below grid, there's an option called level, which you can toggle on. I would recommend toggling on grid as well, by the way. You don't need to for this to work, but it's just generally a good camera feature. With this toggled on, when you open the camera, notice that there's this line that appears when you begin to bring your camera level. It's a solid line in the middle with a line at either side, and the more level you are, the more level the line will be. Your phone will also give you a very slight haptic buzz when you get perfectly level, helping you to get the perfect shot. If you have an iPhone 14 Pro, an iPhone 15 Pro, or a regular iPhone 15, Apple have added a camera format that you should check out. All of these iPhones have a 48 megapixel sensor, meaning that they can take incredibly high resolution images. The problem is that previously Apple restricted these images to the Pro RAW format only. These photos, whilst incredibly impressive looking, are really large, with each photo being somewhere in the region of 100 megabytes in size. In iOS 17, Apple have introduced an HEIF Max format. Open settings, then choose camera, then tap into the formats option. You can see the different format options available with HEIF Max up at the top. These photos don't contain quite as much data as Pro RAW photos, but they still look exceptionally good and they are considerably smaller with Apple estimating that each photo will be somewhere in the region of five megabytes. Also with this feature enabled, you'll notice that when you open the camera app in the upper right hand corner, there is an HEIF Max option which you can toggle on and off as you wish while you're using the camera. A minor change, but Apple have added an additional speed option for haptic touch. Haptic touch, if you're unaware, used to be called 3D touch, and it's essentially when you tap and hold on something on the iPhone to bring up a contextual menu. Your iPhone gives off a slight buzz, and you can set the speed for how quickly this happens. In iOS 16, there were only two options, fast and slow, but in iOS 17, a third middle ground option has been added. To access this, go to settings, then accessibility, then touch, and then choose haptic touch. The new option is called default and you can practice this for yourself and work out which timing is best for you by using the picture at the bottom of this menu. One of the best control center features of the Apple Watch is the ability to use it to ping your iPhone. I've lost my iPhone around the house more times than I care to mention and it's great to be able to simply open control center on my watch, tap the ping iPhone button and have my iPhone play a sound which I can then follow in order to find it. The reverse is now available if you head into settings on your iPhone and then choose control center. There is now an option in there called ping my watch. Add this to your control center and then when you tap on this, your connected Apple Watch will play a sound which you can then use to locate it wherever it may be. By the way, if you're enjoying the content here, why not consider signing up to my free newsletter, The Proper Weekly, which you can do via the link in the description of this video or by scanning the QR code on screen now. The newsletter goes out each Friday and I include some tech news from the week, a behind the scenes of what's happening here on the channel, as well as a tip for an item in the Apple ecosystem. 
If you use iMessage, or more specifically, if you use apps within iMessage, you might have noticed that the menu for getting to these has changed in iOS 17. In iMessage, you would now tap the plus button in the lower left corner and then tap on more and all of your iMessage apps are contained in here. The problem with iMessage apps is that some of them will be installed manually by you, whereas some of them will be installed automatically as additions to regular iPhone apps. There will almost certainly be some in here that you don't care about. In iOS 17, you can remove any that you don't want. Open settings, then head into messages and tap on iMessage apps. This is the list of all iMessage apps that are installed on your device. You have a green toggle next to each one and you can disable any that you don't want to appear. Also, just to show you, if we go back to the list of iMessage apps within iMessage, note that you can tap and hold and then drag apps around in this list to change the order in which they appear. And this does include moving apps from the second page of apps to the first page. If you've logged into any kind of website or portal in the last year or two, you'll no doubt have encountered two-factor authentication at some point. This is where a code is sent to you via another communication method, which you then have to input into the website to verify that it's you. The problem with these codes is that they can very quickly clog up your message inbox. So in iOS 17, Apple have included a setting that allows you to automatically delete these codes immediately after they've been used. To toggle this on, head to settings, then choose passwords and tap into password options. Underneath verification codes, ensure that cleanup automatically is toggled on. Note that for this to work, you will need to ensure that you are auto filling any codes that get sent to you. But the other great thing about this is that in iOS 17, this not only works for codes sent by message, but also codes sent by email. Your iPhone now has a privacy feature called advanced tracking and fingerprinting protection. You find it by going to settings, then Safari, then advanced. You can choose to either disable this or have it apply only to private browsing or have it apply to all browsing that you do. In terms of what this does, according to Apple themselves, advanced tracking and fingerprinting protections help prevent websites from using the latest techniques to track or identify a user's device. So it is very much up to you whether you decide to enable this at all, or if you do where you decide to enable it, but it is there if you want it. It looks like Apple have been hiring some music producers of late because the entire ringtone suite on your iPhone has been updated massively in iOS 17. Now, if you're anything like me, you probably haven't had a ringtone on your iPhone in a number of years because you use your phone in silent mode all the time, but you may want to change that after you've had a listen to some of these. Head into settings, then choose sounds and haptics and tap into where it says ringtone. You can, of course, tap to play all of them and see if there are any here that you like. And if you still prefer the original ringtones, down at the bottom of this menu is an option called Classic, and they are all in there. If you think that you're likely to receive unsolicited, sensitive content on your phone, there is a new setting that will help you. Head into Settings, then choose Privacy and Security, and scroll down until you see the Sensitive Content Warning option. Toggle this on, and you can even specify which communication method you would like this to apply to. If you receive an image or video that your phone believes contains sensitive content, your phone will automatically blur it for you and warn you about it, giving you the option of not opening it in the first place or of ignoring that and viewing it anyway. There are also links here to resources that will help with the possible impact of viewing sensitive content. Whatever it is that you use private browsing for in Safari, chances are if your phone is then handed over to somebody else, you would prefer it if they didn't see what was open in your private browser windows iOS 17 has just made it easier for you to ensure this by adding a private browsing security feature. Open settings and tap into Safari. Scroll down until you see the privacy and security section. Toggle on require face ID to unlock private browsing. Note that if your iPhone has touch ID, you'll be able to do this using touch ID instead. Now, if I open a private browser in Safari, then open a regular browser window and then swipe back to private browser, you'll notice that it will only show the page if I enable it with Face ID. So there you go, those are the settings that I think you should consider changing right now on your iPhone running iOS 17. What do you think? Any that you would have included in this list? Drop me a comment and let me know. And as ever, if you found this video useful, do please consider leaving me a like and subscribing to my channel for more content like this in the future. See you on the next video.